I mean, I think it's just obvious. It's just ridiculous to just give some celebrity uh, a creative director role of anything. There's only like three guys that I think could even possibly work, you know, consistently in that. And that's Ryan Leslie, me, and Will I Am. Pow, oh, what's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brain Man Sean. And today I have to talk about arguably one of the most successful independent artists. As a matter of fact, one of the most independent independent artist there is in the game, that would be Ryan Leslie. I mean, I'm talking about somebody who did $2 million in one album cycle without any major record label and without having his music on streaming services. First, I gotta give a shout out to all of you guys out there who'd asked me to do a video on Ryan Leslie because y'all have been asking for a minute. Now here it is. Now for those of you guys who don't know who Ryan Leslie is, he hit the scene hard with the song Addiction back in 2008, which was featuring Cassie. But not only is he a good singer and rapper, he also is an off the chain producer and got a lot of traction for a video that went viral of him just producing the song Addiction in the studio. But what makes Ryan Leslie so unique in terms of being independent? When I think about what makes Ryan Leslie unique, I always go back to my personal experience. When I first met Ryan Leslie, it was actually at a conference a tech conference and there were only like five black people there it was me Ryan Leslie uh, one of the guys was Ryan Leslie's team member or his assistant or something uh, Paul Judge and maybe somebody else me and Ryan chopped it up a little bit alluded to following up and then he told me to take down his phone information he gave me this link that was basically similar to kind of a B card type feel a couple of months later we hadn't necessarily follow up but then my phone vibrates I pick it up, look at it, and it's a happy birthday text message from Ryan Leslie. I remember thinking, hmm, like this guy can't be like me because me, I know I'll schedule a text so far in advance. I mean, it's not even December yet and I already got a happy Valentine's Day schedule for my girl. I did a little bit of research about Ryan Leslie's super phone and this is what makes Ryan Leslie so unique. Ryan Leslie, a Harvard government major who became a Grammy nominated recording artist, has removed his music from iTunes and launched a company to reach fans in new ways and he's made more money as an independent than ever before. Superphone is basically a CRM for fans. Now, if you guys are not familiar with the concept of a CRM, CRM stands for Customer Relationship Manager. And a lot of companies use CRMs because they have a large amount of customers, but they want to be able to be as personal with their customers as possible, especially in sales. At the very least, you wanna understand your history with that customer so whenever you reach out you're not starting from square one because you know you don't talk to the same people every day it might be months in between but what's all that mean bruh just imagine you're outside you know going through your everyday life and then somebody walks up to you like oh my god i'm your number one fan imagine yourself being able to go really oh man that's dope let me um uh oh actually when i look it up it looks like you're really my 57,304 fan because you haven't bought any of my projects in about three years. Uh, you actually haven't been to any of my concerts. What makes you think you're my number one fan again? Ryan Leslie can do that. I wanna talk about why this is the future, but first check out this example of one really cool way that Ryan Leslie used the platform. And so um, just over this last New Year's, I threw a party and I, I, I just put it out there to all my fans. I said, look, if you guys reserve at a 200 euro price point, a ticket to my New Year's Eve party, I'll throw a private New Year's Eve party. I didn't have a venue, I didn't have anything. 48 hours later, I was up 40,000 euros and I rented a palace in Vienna, Austria and 200 of my top fans came to Vienna, Austria and had a big party with me for New Year's Eve. And then this year we did it again, and this time I said, well, if you guys want a super exclusive package, the tickets are $1,700. That intimate experience, that access, it's not really about the money, it's, it's really about a priceless moment. So go ahead and just let that soak in a little bit. You can simply have an idea, text your fans directly, no marketing in terms of having to pay for advertising, get on certain platforms, don't have to get a graphic designer, none of that time. You can just come up with the concept, get the money in return or at least your fans opinions and then execute it if you still decide you wanna do it. The amount of money and effort that that saves, especially as somebody that's independent, is invaluable. As Ryan Leslie says, he does it with no manager, no record label, none of those things he has a record label of his own that he's running from his phone now check out this other really unique thing that ryan leslie was able to do because of this platform and his access to his fans i realized that maybe they didn't want to support me by buying a digital copy of my record 
But I did have folks that decided, hey, Ryan, if you want to make a video, I'd love to give you my services. If you need 30 Lamborghinis in a video, I run the Lamborghini Club in Belgium, and I can have them all pull up. His name is T-Bog Van Rini. Grant myself a hundred wishes, that mean I'm a genie. genie. 580 horses in my Lamborghini. Ah. When I pull them beauties out, that mean I'm with Van Rini. I'm disguised in 30 cars, that mean you never see me. And the cool thing about it is when you have a fan base, you have no way of knowing what every single person does, what they have access to. This person ran a Lamborghini club, so you got all these Lambos for free. Once again, as an independent artist, any resources are extremely valuable. And when you have this access to resources in these unorthodox ways, you're going to be able to create experiences that other people can't recreate with their fan base. Now let's talk about them sales though. Look at my major label release, 180,000 copies album one and 60,000 copies album two. How does that make sense? You know, when the second album was Grammy nominated. The real disconnect is why wasn't the marketing plan to personally reach out to the 180,000 people that got my first record? Well, that can't be the marketing plan because we don't know those people. All right, well, if you want to continue uh, chasing that dream with those people that don't know those people, then be my guest. For everybody else, man, I'll lead you to the promised land. Take my hand. What Superphone allows him to do is say, hey, y'all like my project? Here's my next project, speaking to the people who actually bought the first project. He alludes to this and talks about this, but it really is a true business principle that it's cheaper to maintain a customer than it is to create a new one. You spend a lot of money trying to create these customers, but once they're in the house, all you have to do is maintain the relationships. They're the ones who are most likely to buy more. A lot of the brands that you use or partake in, you do it more than once and they don't really have to convince you again. But the very first time that you were ever introduced to that, it costed them something to get that brand in front of you. Many of you have heard of the concept of a thousand true fans. I never did a video on it because I thought it was enough videos talking about it out there. So I'll do a link in the description below somewhere. Ryan Leslie is truly an example of that concept because as he said in one video, he did $2 million for an album cycle and it was with around 15,000 fans. Now, if you think about that and you do the math, that's about $133 per fan. But if you do the math, if he only had 1,000 fans, he could have did $133,000 off of that one project with a thousand person fan base. But he's only able to get the most out of his fan base with the least amount of effort because he's able to identify and communicate with his strongest fans. You get his music through his platform, through his website, even if he decides to put something on a Spotify or Apple Music, his fans, his biggest fans have access to it first. And they literally get it through a text message link. This is exactly why this is the future of music. If you want to be successful in the digital era, you need to know who your supporters are. And what this type of contact does is it allows you to cut the marketing costs and it also allows you to cut out the middleman. For independent artists, that's a lot of money saved, which is important when they don't have a lot of money to spend. This is why if you listen to Steve so I'll talk about the music tech company that he just launched, United Masters. Two big things you hear him talking about is marketing and also his company has its own CRM. That next level of connection with fans is going to be huge. As a matter of fact, I wouldn't be surprised if Ryan Leslie had something to do with the United Masters CRM because when I think about it, Andreessen Horowitz is actually an investor in United Masters and they're also an investor in Bevel. Ryan Leslie and Tristan Walker are good friends. So it probably makes sense they all run in a similar circle. I'm pretty sure if not, at the least, he's very aware that there's that competition at play. Competition in those sorts of spaces just lets you know how real the opportunity is, but also validates how much that really is the future. I want to end this video in a slightly different way because I want to end it with some words from Ryan Leslie. So that's it. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button. And number two is it's about sales, right? It is actually about sales. When music is available for free, every sale counts. And so you have to understand that 1% of releases accounts for 77% of money spent on music, right? So that means that less than three, less than 3% of albums released every year 
sell more than a thousand copies. And so for me, wow. I'm interested. Well, I'm, first of all, I'm part of the 3%, right? I might be part of the 1%, right? Yeah. And um, <laughs> what's also interesting is that I'm interested in teaching young musicians how to be part of that 3%. There's so many kids out here, man. They put so much passion.